Hey, Tai here. So welcome to the VRTech channel. So I don't know how we missed it, but with V29, the latest update for the Oculus Quest, Oculus actually added 120Hz support for early their wireless PC VR streaming. So let's talk about it. In this video, we're gonna also talk about the new dashboard that is very particular indeed with the, some little things that are very reminiscent uh, to Android. And talking about Android, Google yesterday showcased a new stunning technology to have holographic telepresence in reality. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, guys, this is going fast. We have and when Rich and Mark decided to do a crazy thing to start to give away one Oculus Quest 2 each month till the end of the year. Yes, so yeah, let's get on board. Remember to like, share and subscribe so this video goes uh, around and we reach that even faster. So maybe at the end of this month, let's get to the video. V29 was pretty cool. I made a video the other day uh, with all the different features. If you didn't receive it yet, I'm gonna leave the link in the description below for the guide to manually install it. So you can have all these features directly on your Oculus Quest right away. Nothing appears, don't worry. Uh, usually it takes like two or three restarts. In my case, it took five restarts of the headset, but then the new dashboard were there and well, all the new features coming with V29. And one feature that we didn't talk about because well, they didn't actually announce it uh, when they announced the update is the fact that we finally have right now AirLink, so uh, the link, but wireless, with the support for 120 Hz. That is absolutely fantastic. Now, the games that are supporting 120 Hz on the Oculus Quest 2 are growing and growing when it comes to games natively. But the particular thing about PC VR is that you can run every single game at 120 Hz uh, right away. Of course, you need a PC powerful enough to run it. Now, how does it work? Well, you have to select your Oculus Quest 2 in your devices part of the Oculus software and scrolling down into the settings for the streaming. Well, you're gonna find 60 Hz, 72 Hz, 90 Hz, and now 120 Hz. What you're gonna notice right away when you select 120 Hz, if you are on automatic resolution, well, that is gonna drop because this is a particular thing. Don't expect the same quality going from 90 Hz to 120 Hz. At the end of the day, it's one third more to process all the time. Now, of course, also remember to go in the settings on the Oculus Quest 2 and select uh, in experimental features the 120 Hz or you're not gonna be able to use it, of course. But how is it? Well, I have to say that it's super fluid and super smooth and it's absolutely fantastic when it comes to it, but there's a big hit when it comes to clarity, of course, because the compression is really off the chart. Now, I tried to record from internal recording on the Oculus Quest 2 to show you a bit better, but over there also you have the compression of the recording so it's not really the best way to show it, I know, but uh, there's no other way, uh, really. So you have to take my words on it. I have to say that, yes, it's fantastic, 120 hertz, everything feels much better. If you're suffering motion sickness, that is gonna help as well, for sure. But yeah, just know that you're gonna have a big hit in quality. Also, by the way, 120 hertz is supported on the regular link. The quality there is a bit better, uh, but yeah. Uh, that's what we have. Anyway, amazing to see the update. It's kind of weird that they didn't put it in, in the change log of a V29. Now, playing around a bit with the new dashboard, I have to say that I'm starting to like it uh, a lot. It, it's very clean and stuff. And uh, there's some stuff that I don't really understand. Like right now, the settings are not in a personal tab, but they're considered like just a regular app. So they're gonna move up and down, depends on the applications that you're using. So it's not really ideal. I wish there was a button there also uh, when you click on the application part of the dashboard, but they added the quick settings is a much easier way. So uh, like in Android, at the end of the day, clicking on the left bar when you have the connection, the clock and the battery, well, you're gonna open directly the quick settings. So they are a bit bigger than before, so it's very nice. Uh, you have all the different options. They also have the new pass-through uh, little toggle over there that is very useful because actually changes the virtual environment and go to completely to the pass-through. And what I really like are the new battery indicators. Uh, they're on the top left. You have the headset and the two controllers, but if you look at your headset, you also have the little dots over there uh, to show you the battery life of those. I wish the gray one wasn't that's similar to the green one because it's kind of hard to understand if it's like four dots or three dots in my left one, for example. Uh, but yeah, it's super useful indeed. Something that they took from Windows Mixed Reality Works is very, very intuitive. So good job there. 
And again, if you were like me, oh, where is the setting button and stuff like that, now is the top right part of the quick settings. I have to say that the first day I was like a little confused, but now uh, it's very natural. It really feels like um, Android at the end of the day. Now, as you notice, this is a white dashboard. I actually really like it. You can go on settings and change it over there. The only thing is every time you change it, you have also to restart the Oculus Quest. That is absolutely weird uh, because there's a step that didn't feel that big, but yeah, for now it's like this. But yeah, now we're gonna talk about Project Starline from Google. That is absolutely fantastic. Uh, yesterday they did the Google I.O. with all the developer thing and stuff, but it's not for us. What's for us is a new research that they did called Project Starline that used the light field technology to actually create a more interactive holographic telepresence without glasses. This relies on custom hardware and very specialized equipment because they have to create a 3D model on your face real time and then be able to stream it on this screen then it's gonna have a new 3D perception. So you actually are an hologram. And the thing, it looks absolutely mind blowing and very realistic. It's kind of weird to see someone uh, through a window in a way and thinking about having a conversation, but for sure it's much better than just having a conversation in front of a screen with the very bad webcams that we have right now. Now the cool thing here is that you don't need even glasses to use it. We saw different screens with this holographic perception uh, from Sony, for example, and this is like blown out uh, situation where you can actually have a one-to-one -one representation of a person over there and have a real chat. And to be honest, talking about VR, this is our cup of tea, I can wait to see avatars like those actually arriving also in VR. So being able to have a conversation in different places as well and be more interactive with a one-to-one -one representation of ourselves. This, of course, is just a tech demo research that they did, so you're not gonna be able to buy that pod at home and uh, talk with everyone you want around because, yeah, uh, there's a special equipment for it, but I think that that's absolutely fantastic what they achieved there, and I hope that they keep going on this 3D representation of people. And yeah, holograms, everyone wants to be an hologram. I wanna be an hologram, do you? But yeah, guys, that was all I thought that was super interesting. We already saw a demo of the light field technology in VR. There's also an application that you can download and absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. So I'm very glad they are keep pushing on this technology to have 3D representation, real representation of the real world. So yeah, another little step to get to the real metaverse. Again, that's all. Are you gonna use 120 hertz on Ireland? Are you gonna stick to 90 hertz with a better graphic? Let me know which one do you prefer. I have to say that the smoothness also with the controllers and stuff, it's a big, big difference. Uh, but yeah, the quality, it's a big hit, so remember that. Let me know what you think about it in the comment below, and as always, guys, if you liked the video, like, if you did like the video, just like, subscribe to the channel for more VR tech. If you really love the channels, and join button down there, little on further, also the Patreon, thanks to all the Patreon to support the channel, of course, and uh, yeah, uh, we have t-shirts to get mass, 2021 item number one, and uh, that's it. So like, let's do a lot. Like, dislike, subscribe, see you guys next video. Thanks for watching, ciao.